Well, we're here. We're going to talk about worshiping at Christmas. Starting out with an image of the nativity here on our front porch. You can hear the, the traffic of Newcastle KY. Plenty of it. I got a couple more symbols of Christmas we'll show here. Just make it really crazy here and add another one at the same time. As obnoxious as possible, right? Now tuning in on our table here, and I've got my dear bride, and she's ready for Christmas, as you see, and let me get ourselves hooked up here on the screen. Let me get Harriet right here on this, too. Try to. Just pull up Facebook, dear. I can't figure out how to find it on your phone. Well, anyway, folks, I want to talk with you all about um, Christmas tonight, Harriet and I, and we've we've had the idea this week to to try to to talk with you about what it means to be in worship at Christmas and why and what that even means. So, technical difficulties aside. What we have right now is, this is the 22nd. This is Tuesday night of Christmas week. JR needs you. Sorry, honey. But anyway, the, big, the topic we want to mention tonight is the fact that we know that a lot of you are in worship and um, active in worship in a local church, whether it is Drennan or otherwise, and we also know that during this year, uh, with what's going on in the world with with the COVID nineteen pandemic, that a lot of you are not in worship in a church because of health issues or pre existing conditions, things like that. And then there's also the fact that many of us are um, are not into worship right now simply because we're not. And, and this has been a year where a lot of you have maybe for the first time in a long time talked about um, being in worship due to the fact that everybody is recording their services as a church. But then after the two months of the quarantine during March, uh, mid-March through mid-May, then that stopped and a lot of churches came back to being open again. But... That did not always translate into people wanting to be in attendance at a local church or be part of the body of Christ. So we wanted to discuss that tonight. Now you saw that I was out on the porch showing our nativity, our little um, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on our porch. That's a big important symbol for us. And then I came inside and you see that we have the Christmas decorations that everybody else has too. We had a, a Frosty that... Harriet just got this week playing a piano, playing Christmas carols, and then we had the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, the little bitty tiny one. Oh, I killed it. I'm wearing little bitty uh, bulbs on my head, and Harriet had a Victorian bonnet, and what we're showing is all these Christmas traditions. And what I wanted to ask you all first, and I see a lot of you commenting in and just saying, hey, we're here and all that, is tell me about your Christmas traditions 
if you possibly can in the comments. Now, as let me just repeat that question for you. Tell me about your Christmas traditions in your family, what, Christi what Christmas means to you, and I'm not looking for a special answer just because I'm the preacher. Don't be intimidated by me. I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt and I have lights on my bald head, okay? The question is, what does your family partake of or think of with Christmas? And I'm going to read the comments while you're thinking about that and typing. So, Bruce, you win the award tonight for the first one tuning in. And that could be Lauren typing. It could be Gabriel. But Bruce Robertson, good evening, family. Heather Nicole Banta, hello and hello to you. And Casey Jeffries, hello, guys. Wonderful to see you because I know... It's really hard for someone who drives five hours a day to get to Bible study. I'm glad you're here with us tonight. Bruce says, love it. It's like going to Walmart and hitting all the buttons at once, and that's what I was trying to do because that snowman, he will play all night. Three dollars. Three dollars. Yeah, where'd you get it at? Uh, Big Time Bargains in Shelbyville, Flea Market. There's your commercial. Uh, Jeannie Miskell, hi. Hi, Jeannie. Cousin Jeannie. Yay. And boy, she's had a, a rough December. But yes, she has. Glad she's on like Chris Banta. With the emojis, Melissa Baker. We have Indiana tuning in. How about that? Good to see you, Melissa. Good to see you. I probably came with her, I would say. And and Chris, love our shirt. Thank you for you know. I can't help it. This is not Baby Yoda. It's not Grogu. It is the original OG Yoda. So I'm representing right there. Barb with a heart. And I'm I'm surprised I've got that Barb because I know you all were going to be preparing for the candlelight tomorrow night. But glad to see you there. And the last one we have. Heather says, still get Barbies for Christmas because me and my sisters, back in like 2009, we got into a sibling fight over them, so my mom keeps it going. We have a connection. How many years, Harriet, did we give Abigail Barbie ornaments when she was growing up? Oh, a lot. A she lot. had a really good co collection of those. She did. I remember. My Hallmark store. Yeah, they were beautiful. And Kane is unfortunately at work, but you can tell him all about this beautiful mm. extravaganza. Yeah. So, Harriet, why are you dressed as you are? Um, my experience, I think, it, when we, especially when we watch old movies and things like that, is that uh, going back to Victorian times, and... Uh, Hello to your Aunt Linda, by the way. Hi, Aunt Linda. And, so, yeah, so we, uh, living in a house like that, it, it just brings me back in the way it used to be, and how important it seems like more back then. And I think about roasted chestnuts on the open fire. They used to hang just their socks on the mantle and um and, and also a lot more caroling then and of course this would have been part of the attire and since we didn't get to do that this year i really wanted to wear it yeah and last year that's we what, did carol that's what it meant to me here on main yeah. street we were up the street by the henry county locker and i remember because i was on my scooter because i was just uh, two months into my surgery for my achilles tendon i'm glad i'm not revisiting that as if 2019 could be any weirder, 2020 has passed it. For me, I'm wearing this stuff because I love the Charlie Brown, Rudolph, Frosty, and then the newer ones like Elf and Christmas Story and all those things, the traditions that are secular and that we love. And we've been playing Christmas carols, cooking dinner just now. Um, we had fried chicken and peas and macaroni, and we were playing on Pandora Christmas songs. And we're watching movies just about every day. Next in line is Frosty. We're supposed to watch next. And we've still got It's a Wonderful Life. And um, we watched Christmas Story yesterday. We yeah. want to watch White Christmas. Yeah, White Christmas. Uh, we're thinking about looking at Christmas Chronicles, which is on Netflix. We haven't seen before. And then there's a movie we want to watch Christmas Miracle. Yes, which it's was made miracles. by Hallmark, I think. That's Heather fun. saying, yes, it was so much fun. And, and it is. You know, when you have those traditions from when you're a little girl or for some of y'all, a little boy. You love it. Aww. Chris, you and your dad collected pocket knives, and we would always trade them at Christmas. That's awesome. And I love it, Chris, that uh, that your grandmother has said that baby Clark, who is one day old, looks a lot like oh, your dad. Oh, yeah. Which is amazing. What a beautiful baby. Yeah, he, he's a stud. He's a flat-out <laughs> stud. And that picture with him and Felina with his eyes open, he might as well just been given a high five or a thumbs up because he, he's ready. But we also want to connect this to, um, to you all to make Christmas approachable on this level right here. And I've got, you know, we've got nativities all around our house and certainly in the church. We have a beautiful nativity that uh, Judy Roberts bought that's on top of our uh, piano. Hey, Anthony, glad to see you coming hey, here. Hey, Anthony. Old time church family right there. 
And we've got a, a nativity that came from Haiti. I know that Eric Bush's uh, mother brought back one year and that my mother built a, a stable for it. So we've got all these things around the church that stand for that. And the point I'm getting to is that we can enjoy this and we can enjoy your bonnet, which she, she's taken off, and her fur and all that. Yep. Your grandmother made this sweatshirt. My grandmother. She went through a phase where she did the, the puppy paint yep. and sequins. I think I got it like the first year you and I were together. Mm -hmm. she she had, I had one, too, that she made. Sorry, my it seemed like it had an animal on it. Yep. But we want to talk about making church worship in-house approachable and vital. And... Again, uh, when Harriet stepped away and I was talking, I was outlining the fact that many of you that will see this video either live or later are in worship regularly in person at Drennan or otherwise at another church. There are some of you that are this year because of the COVID-19 are tuning in um, on online only because of your... Uh, pre-existing conditions or your age or your trepidation but there are some of you I know and, I, and I'm just being real here who who believe in Christ as their Savior but are not participating in worship either in person or online now that's tough to talk about because we believe that we are saved by faith by the grace of God and his loving mercy not by the amount of times you go to church, not by the amount of years you've taught Sunday school, not how clean your life is, but in fact by the saving grace of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, a loving Father in heaven, the Holy Spirit at work, and therefore it's not something you earn. But being in worship in a house of the Lord, like Drennan or otherwise, is something we need to do. Now, I can tell you, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, we have our traditional candlelight service. 7 o'clock. Um, we usually have a play and a big blowout and desserts because everybody can cook really well at the little local churches. This year, we're not having the play. We're not having the desserts. Obvious reasons. But we are going to have some special music in-house. We're going to have scriptures. We're going to have a message. And we're going to have the candlelight. You know how beautiful is it, Drennan. But... Our family, Thursday night, Christmas Eve, we will go worship at another church as well. Um, the tradition at Drennan has usually not been to have the service on Christmas Eve itself. I'd like to revisit maybe doing that. This Thursday night, we're going to go, is it 6.30 here at Newcastle Christian Church? 6.30, yes. Newcastle Christian. Across so I'd like, the street. That is right across the street from our house. So those of you all that are watching this and know where we live, well, there's two churches across from us, Newcastle Methodist, Newcastle Christian. The Brown Church, down the hill towards, driving towards Eminence, 6.30. If you want to be in a house of the Lord Christmas Eve night, Newcastle Christian is one of them. Uh, another one in the county, Jeannie likes your shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 25 years old or so, almost, from my grandmother Pauline House. Another church locally that will have a service on uh, Christmas Eve night is Port Royal United Methodist. I think they're 630 as well, but check their Facebook page. They do have an active Facebook page, Port Royal Methodist. If you are in Oldham County or towards Oldham County, like Pendleton, Sligo area, I know that a couple of them that are having it behaven. The, the Old Baptist Church in LaGrange has a Christmas Eve service. And also Freedom Church, good friends of ours through the, the Emmaus community, are having one in Buckner, mm -hmm. where they meet right near Oldham County High School. I think theirs might be at 7. I'm not certain of that. But again, Facebook pages, uh, Freedom Church in Buckner, the Haven Church Baptist in uh, LaGrange, Port Royal Methodist here, and Newcastle Christian here. There are others, but these are just ones that Manual. I think... Baptist and Chevy. Emmanuel Baptist and Chevy. Okay, I did not see that. All right. And we're just trying to tell you be in worship. Now, if you're if you live somewhere else, get on get online. You're on Facebook obviously watching this. Look for the local churches and see what's there. And now, why? Why do we want them in church? And 
Why should you be in church? Yeah. I mean, that's... We've talked about some Christmas traditions, but those are just the secular, what I've seen, the secular Mostly ones, secular. Which, is, which is lovely. Um, but why, if you're drawn to church, we are on Christmas Eve, if, why would that be important, do you think? And if you are watching this right now and have a comment about that, please type it in of why being in worship at a church, a meeting house, is important to you at Christmas, or really important to you any time of the year. Right. If you're going to type that, please feel free right now, but I want us to read a scripture. Mm -hmm. We have in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 18 through 25. In my Bible, or the one we're reading, which is an NIV Bible, this section is called A Call to Persevere in Faith. I can't wear my glasses and this headband at the same time, so I'm going to have to lose the headband. So 19. Starting at 19. And We've that got is, a couple of uh, comments coming in here already. Anthony said for fellowship. Yep, good point, mm -hmm. Anthony. And Chris, accountability. Yeah. Yes, sir. And now we got another sin because the birth of Jesus is when our salvation begins. And you all are Ooh, yeah. you, you all are hitting hardball oh, right yeah. now. Anthony, um, we could just say bye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, you for get teaching. it. Bye. Anthony, I know for you with your sweet mother and your sister, uh, this year going on to the Lord, your mother was a very big part of our first several years at Drennan because she treated us like kings and queens. Mm -hmm. And we miss her. Yeah. And Alice Ball was a sweet angel of a woman to us. And uh, the fellowship we felt with her was real mm -hmm. because she made us feel good. She knew all of her favorite dishes and brought it. Chris Banta, uh, you're one to talk about accountability because I, I know first thing yesterday morning, Monday morning, when I uh, got up and came downstairs and like a lot of us pull out that phone, one of the first things I saw was two pictures from a wake ministry showing you teaching from the Bible to a room full of men and women. If we don't have that sort of accountability with Scripture, then what are we doing? And those are folks there at Awake in Shelbyville that are there for a reason. They're, they're trying to improve their lives, get out of a, a trap that the world has set to break every chain, as the song says. And that's part of it, being accountable in the Bible. And I know, Chris, when you were uh, coming out of areas of darkness yourself, you told me you were in four Bible studies a day. Yeah. Amen to that. And then Heather, the birth of Jesus is where it began. I mean, this is what it's all about. And it's where our salvation began. Yeah, that, that, that's it. And he came to this earth, you know, we this year I've had the, the Bible reading and the bulletin every week to read the entire Bible in a year. And I was, several people in our church have done that. You'll read three times as much every day from the Old Testament because it's so much longer leading up to Jesus, but God sent his son down here because enough he had to come. And that's where it really began for us. And we're welcome. Harriet and I, neither one are Jewish by heritage. Um, really cool folks that are. Yeah, I wanted to be. Yeah. And we, we came in as Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Adopted into the family. Adopted. We are adopted parents, yes. and we are adopted children mm -hmm. of the king. Anthony commented, thank you, she loved y'all, and we know that, Anthony. We, we absolutely felt that and miss her. I uh, can hear her voice. You talk about somebody who held people accountable, Alice. Mm -hmm. She told you right now what she was thinking, and <laughs> you might not like it. That's right. Too bad. But, it was the truth. She spoke the right. truth and from her heart. Uh -huh. Well, let's read this scripture. If you have a Bible, or if you're just following along, or if you're just watching in the easy chair, it doesn't matter. Hebrews chapter um, 10, verses 19 through 25. I believe that's seven verses. Harriet, would you read the first four, 19 through 22, and I'll okay. read 23 through 25. This is from the NIV that we have, but whatever you're reading from. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest for the house of God, one more time. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience 
and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. It's said right here, already in the first century, um, Jesus has just been here, and already people are getting out of the habit of meeting. Yeah. Here we are 20 centuries later, and we know it's a fact. And right now, this year, it's really, it's, it's really hard. And, and this year, more than, than most, it's been a challenge. And we know that some of you that will be watching this video, especially those that watch it afterwards on YouTube or wherever, that are not able to get out right now and meet in a local church, it's really hard to get in a, a, a meeting house. And we know people that we talk to even just today that are really skittish about getting out at all. And and I hate that. I understand it. I hate it. I hate the circumstances. And but I say just, hate, I don't say that me lightly. Feel like, I mean, it's just Satan at work. Yeah. I mean, he. I feel like it's all him. He's behind all of that while we cannot come together the way we normally come together as a church family. And we live in a fallen world, yes. is what we have. And a lot of folks that are not in worship in attendance at a meeting house have, sadly, the misunderstanding that when you come to church, you got to have your life cleaned up, and also that all your problems will go away. And if your problems don't go away, you're disappointed and think you got gypped. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't promise that. those are false teachings. And if you've received those kind of teachings in church in the past, whether it drain or otherwise, I'm here to tell you it wasn't right. It wasn't true. Um, as a preacher myself, I can stand up there and say the wrong thing because I'm a human. And I'm sure my predecessors, which are many, <laughs> have, have done that as well, and other churches too. But I know for us, the things that were mentioned here, the fellowship that we feel with the people at Drennan, it's, it's hard to describe how important it is because we've been with you all for 11 and a half years and we look at you as family. We say that term church family a lot, but we mean it. And I was thinking just last night when you have those deep thoughts late in the evening when you can't sleep about how we have so many people that we feel like we're on the line with, not just on the phone, but just in our thoughts. Whereas a lot of people are just dealing with themselves only, and they don't have the people they want to reach out to and to talk with on a weekly basis. And that fellowship is real. Do we get a comment here? In we did. Chris Ban just says, in the early church they met every single day at the house of worship sold everything they owned and distributed to the needy. That would have been awesome to see. And Chris, I know you're quoting from the end part of Acts chapter 2, which has become as important a section of the Bible to me as any um, over the last few years because Acts 2.42 and following really describe what it should be like. And I would love to meet every day. That's one way that I've mentioned before. It's not envy of the Catholics that have Mass every day, but I'm really intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I'm still blessedly able to retire in 18 months from my uh, school system job, which has been a tremendous blessing to me for 26 years, I want to do more things. That's not the be-all and the end-all, being there. It's not what it's about. That's not our salvation, being in there. But the fellowship there is real. Chris, you yourself mentioned the accountability. That's a big one to me about why to be in worship at a church. Mm -hmm. Harry, what do you think of when you hear the word accountability? Uh, I feel like that I'm not in this alone. That, you know, our journey is hard. And um, so I feel like that knowing that I'm taking this journey with others, of my sisters and brothers of Christ, then it makes it doable, I guess, or uh, definitely um, I feel more uh, at ease with it. I mean, I can, 
If I'm upset, I, you know, our, our brothers and sisters are supposed to cry with me. They're supposed to be upset with me. And if I'm rejoicing, they rejoice. And, and that's something said about that. You, you know, that's, no one wants to do anything wrong. Well, and that, that accountability part, the iron sharpens iron. And I was thinking earlier today in preparation for this talk about a, a few of our members that have gone along. And since Anthony's watching tonight, you know, Alice is one that, like we said, she would tell you if you were not being straight up or legit in the church or your attitude or whatever, she'd tell you. There were a couple of men that had gone on to their much higher reward that I want to talk about that both lived into their 80s um, that would tell me when they weren't going to be in worship. And this is the importance of being in worship. M.B. Um, Harden, senior, passed away about nine years ago, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry if that's not accurate. But So he was at our church for decades, but the first couple of years that we were there, M.B. would tell me months in advance when it would be coming up to his and Helen's anniversary, and he would take her to Renfro Valley for the weekend to see the country music shows and just to get out and travel. So I would know that M.B. and Helen would not be in worship. And the fact that they were sweet and upright enough to tell me that made me feel very warm inside because being at worship together at Drennan was that important to that man. As an elder of our church, he wanted me to know I would be there. So he felt like he was being, having to, to be accountable. Yeah. Another yes. one who um, outlived MB by a few years, Melvin Loudon. Um, he passed away a few years after MB and uh, was a, a widower by the time we came to Drennan, he would tell me the same. And I would know in advance if Melvin was going to go to the family reunion or anything else that came up. And the only time in our tenure at Drennan that he was ever absent twice in a row, Sundays, for the last two weeks of his life when he was so sick. And um, that says a lot about somebody in their 80s saying, hey, I'm going to be in worship because I want to be in worship. You know, I, I tell people that when they're, they're not going to be at worship at Drennan, let me know so I don't worry about you, so I know what's going on. I will miss you. When we're not able to be at Drennan on a Sunday, it's it feels weird. We've had two weekends in 2020. One was in February. We went with JR to a video gaming tournament in Detroit. And we worshiped that Sunday at Farmington Hills Presbyterian Church. And then earlier this fall, I think October, September or October, one or the other, we went to my family reunion on my mom's side and we worshiped at Zion Baptist Church in Ohio County where my cousin Chad Patterson is the pastor. Love going to those other churches, but it's not Drennan. And that's our church home. It's not that Drennan's the special place, but that's our special place. So... We're trying to implore you, if you come across this video, as you're scrolling through Facebook, mm -hmm. which we all do, and if you see Harriet in her bonnet, or now in her homemade sweatshirt from my grandmother, or me in my very silly um, Dollar Tree headband that JR provided for us, or my Yoda shirt, we're here wanting you to get in worship. And it doesn't have to be a dream. We just want you to be there. And um, that it's about more than these things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we love this stuff too. I mean, like Jesus is the reason for the season or for Christmas, which we have yeah. a snowball up there that says that as well. Yeah. Um, Let me grab that. But, uh, also, I mean, uh, you know, I, I want to propose a question to you all, and that is, when did you first really realize that oh this is about the nativity this is about the birth of jesus because you know all of, all of us when we were little we we're it's all about santa claus and gifts and dinners with the family and so forth but when did it which are good you? things yeah which are lovely things great and i hope they continue but what about when it hits you what this really is about his boots are hanging backwards <laughs> shaking upside down too he's got snow there we go 
Well, and if you are on here and, and paying attention to that, just tell us when you realize the, the significance of Christmas. Right. And I know for me, growing up in Sligo Baptist, we loved the Christmas season because there would be a play. You know, there would be special events. Usually they would like draw names and somebody would be getting you a gift uh, from the church. Um, maybe a, an adult, maybe one of the senior members of the church. It was all good stuff, but I know for a fact that I didn't have a thought in my head for the longest time about what that meant. So, and, and I know that... I hope people aren't sleeping. I'm not seeing any comments. <laughs> Did you all fall asleep on us? They might have. <laughs> Did you have to get off and go wrap a present? Let's hear from you. That's tight, okay. Tight, tight. Understood. But, um, you know, the, the significance of just being there in the worship versus... Just the ho, ho, ho. That's what we're getting at. So what did he say, Carrie? We got one from Anthony you. said, I was young in Sunday school when I realized it was about Jesus. And hopefully you're getting that, you know, if you're kids. I know that we have been blessed at Drennan to have um, elementary, early, middle school age have a class right now. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren and Robertson. And then we got Heather and and Heather Chris. and Chris, who are on here tonight. So we've had representation from both of our classes here, the Robertsons and the Bantas. Chris and Heather have been working with our high school and college age young adults. And uh, it's huge. We want them to know. We also are going to be starting out having periodically a children's message during worship, which we haven't had for a long time. We need that for our kids to feel that connection because we've got... Um, Right now, in, in solid attendance, probably our youngest is a three-year-old, and she's on. She knows what she's doing, but she needs to be taught at her level. And we're hoping and praying that this week, that among our active members, we're going to have a baby this week. So, <laughs> pretty, pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So, well, um, we certainly need to pray for everybody, but what I want to wrap it up with and really summarize with for you all tonight is if you possibly can get inside a church building this Christmas season now I say that knowing that some of you that are out there will not be getting out anywhere because of COVID-19 understood at the very least watch a full worship service online or on TV. Some of them are on TV right now, believe it or not. But online, you've got churches everywhere that will be broadcasting. If you're getting out into the community, if you're going to Walmart or Dollar General every day, get into a church because probably like our church, they're spreading out where people sit. They're asking you to wear a mask at least until you sit down. Some of them might even be asking you to wear one the whole time. They're trying their best to keep you safe. Get into a house of the Lord. And, and don't let it be that you just say, well, I will. And then you don't do it. Do you have any final thoughts about that here, getting into it, getting into worship? I mean, I don't want to beg people, but I feel like it's, if you only understood what it meant to be there versus not. Well, it, again, it's back to what are you feeling in your heart? Uh, it, you know, how important is our Savior to you? And how important then would it be to celebrate his birthday as it would be any family member? I mean, he's, he's the ultimate. Um, so I think when we think about Christmas, uh, he should be number one because it is his birthday. And Bobby Jones, number two. <laughs> yeah. One of our members, one of our elders, born the same day as Jesus, but Jesus was born first. I want to mention a connection again. Uh, today I've been I've been driving back and forth a lot, uh, running back and forth a lot, and listening to the Robertsons Unashamed podcast in my car much of the time. And uh, not coincidentally, whenever scripture comes up that you're supposed to hear, um, you hear it anyway. And I was hearing this scripture, which we'd already planned to use, which is crazy. They were talking about the importance of being in corporate worship, mm -hmm. taking communion together, mm -hmm. the body and blood of Christ. Now, we don't mm -hmm. sit and drink blood, and we don't eat flesh, but we take the bread and the juice that stands for that. 
and what's on front of the altar there in remembrance of him. Mm -hmm. And we're going there to do that for him right. together. We're partaking of that meal. We don't go and have soup and sandwiches every time we meet. Now, in pre-pandemic, we met for a meal most Wednesday nights. But to have that Holy Communion together meant we're doing this together. Right. And again, Because we're all heading, on, heading to heaven. That's our journey. That's what we're doing. And if, if you are fighting against being in worship at a church and making every, every, every excuse to not go be part of a local church, I would challenge you to reflect on what you really believe. You know, that being in the house of the Lord is not your salvation, but if you're fighting it and rebelling against it to the point where you simply do not attend anywhere anymore, you need to look inward and think about it. And it's about the relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I cannot have one with Corey if I don't see him, if I don't fellowship with him, if I don't get to know Corey better, um, if we don't talk to each other. So it's it's the same principle with Christ. We're, we're not going to go anywhere with him if we don't do those things. And that's one, go to, go to worship. Fellowship with other Christians. Let them hold you accountable. Uh, get scripture uh, from the things that are provided for you at the church. Sunday school, uh, Bible, Wednesday night Bible study. Get yourself in a house of the Lord this week. Find one on Sunday. Make it your resolution this year. New Year's happens next week. Get in there. Let's pray, little Harriet. You start and I'll finish. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us an opportunity to uh, fellowship with um, those that are uh, on Facebook and those that will be on YouTube later. Lord, I pray that uh, we have uh, come to you, come with humbleness for you uh, to put you at the top that you are the one that's on the pedestal, that you're the one we should be celebrating uh, the birth of your son. And Lord, I just pray for uh, those that are hearing that their ears and their eyes and their ear, their ears and their eyes and their hearts are open. And Lord, we pray that those that have any kind of hesitation about getting back into church, I've been gone too long, or they don't know what I've done, they don't know how bad I am, or any of that stuff. Don't, that's, that's the enemy speaking. Mm -hmm. Get in there. We're a pretty rough and tumble group at Drennan, and I know there's other uh, local churches that are rough around the edges that would love to have you. Come find us uh, tomorrow night at Drennan, Thursday night at lots of churches, and Sunday morning all around. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope to see you all soon. Tomorrow night, hopefully. Drennan at 7. And lots of other places. Merry Christmas for those Merry Christmas. Christmas.